if we don't have a proper will or trustee that is recorded, as you are stating, as we've talked about tonight, does that weaken our standing as general executor? Um, well, it makes the proving of it harder. But remember, <clears throat> um, a number of folk on the call may well be in the position of being a director of a company apart from your own personal standing. For example, if you are the director of a company and that company is registered, most of those company registers now are available on the internet and the ability to produce an extract from that register is public proof that you are in fact the general executor or, or, or a co-executor of that company. And that is more than enough proof. So it's not simply that you may be the general executor of the Franco Collins estate, you may well be the general executor of Eucadia. Um, or you may be the general executor of XYZ. So I would um, I would say to you that the the recording of the will, the uh, recording of it as a deed and executing of it um, makes the argument stronger. But if you're dealing with a company matter, it does not affect your strength in maintaining your position providing you act as an executor. So I think that's the answer to that question specifically. Because I do know in the nature of that question and and the history of that question that there is also a company associated. So I hope that answers that for people as well. All right, great. Thank you, Frank. Um, next question here uh, from the chat. I just received short form birth certificate from Alberta. The long one is going to take three extra weeks. The names are all in proper case. Let's see where this is contained. Is there any significance to the proper case spelling? Mm. <clears throat> well, there is. Yes, there is. It'd be wrong for me to say there's not. Um, but d does it does it um, does it matter? The the upper case in their system is used principally to denote uh, trusts, uh, but to denote legal persons. So let, let me explain how this works. Um, a trust creates, uh, is created by some rights or property being conveyed into it. Those rights are put into what's called the trust corpus. The trust corpus is also called other things. It's also called the body corporate uh, or the corporate person. So the, the, the res, the property, becomes the body of the person. And so every time you see up a case, you see a legal person, which is identifying both a, a trust corpus and the existence of some kind of trust and the property itself, once it's into a trust corpus, may entail more than one thing. It may entail uh, a title to land, it may entail a, a car, it may entail a whole lot of other different things. And so that collection is then called an estate. And what makes an estate unique is that an estate divides the property within the trust corpus that the estate belongs to into two groupings, real estate or real property and personal estate or personal property. So the name on your birth certificate in uppercase, depending upon how you want to split the hairs, denotes not only the existence of a legal person, but it also denotes the existence of an estate, it also denotes the existence of a trust. Uh, so that's why the uppercase is used for all those different things. It's why you see companies uh, in uppercase. Uh, it's why you see your name in different things in uppercase. So I hope that answers the question. All right. That's, that's good. Thank you, Frank. Uh, let's go to the phone lines again. We have uh, Boshan on the phone. Hello. Hi. 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 
Hey, uh, I'm a little behind the times here. I'm uh, trying to keep up with everything, but I had a couple of points that I want to ask you, and I was listening to Ron. Uh, sir, to my knowledge, certificate of title, like for what they call a motor vehicle, is not actual title. It's just proof the title exists. Yeah. So my point here is certificate, certificate of birth, uh, the way I see it, is probably a title. Yes, uh, it is. So if the certificate of birth is a title, and like uh, Ron mentioned, uh, doing the executor position drawn by the testator, aren't they doing the same thing? Uh, the way I see it, the way they've switched everything, they get us to register to vote, they get us to get a driver's, whatever it is, what into this federal system, or I call it the Bar Association system. Uh, yeah. Do we, in a sense, have we appointed the executors of a state of their title? In which would I, I, would I, I see what you're, I see what you're saying. Yeah. Okay. Um, there's a couple of sections. Um, can I ask you a couple of quick questions? Have you had a chance to have a look at the canons of positive law? I have, but it's probably been a few months. Oh, well, <laughs> as Ron would testify, much to his chagrin, uh, they have been uh, updated quite a bit since then. <laughs> well, okay. Okay. yeah, I imagine yeah, yeah. I've been working. And, but yeah, yeah. I, I started from the beginning. I just haven't been able to keep up with it. No, that's all right. And I, again, I apologize, but I, I put out an open apology to Ron, and I put an apology to everyone that it's an update. It's an up. It's a work in progress, but that comes back to the point of when we find things out, we need to integrate. The reason I mention that is a couple, couple of reasons. One is that when we state ourselves the general executor of the legal person, then really we're establishing the, the fact that, that no one but ourselves can claim our own body, ultimately nor can they claim our mind ultimately, nor can they claim our soul ultimately uh, in one but ourselves. You follow? Right. Now they can claim executorship of an individual trust where they want to split something off. They want to split off a car. Or in some cases when we talk about these hidden trusts, they may want to split off and claim our body. Yeah? But nowhere have I seen in their system do they ever stretch themselves to the point of claiming to be the executor, the general executor of the whole thing. You follow? I do. So if you play the P in shell game at the level of merely being an executor, then I would agree with you wholeheartedly that you're going to be playing that till the day you die because they'll be producing more trust than you can deal with and you'll be basically, you know, chasing your tail, saying, I'm the executor, I'm the executor. And I'll say, well, are you or not? You know, and, and goes on. But when it comes to the role of general executor over all the trusts, and therefore the whole estate of the legal person, that is entirely outside of their system. It encompasses their system, but it is beyond their system. You follow? I do. Okay. Now, as to your earlier question about title, the certificate absolutely is a certificate of title. And what is the original? Well, title, and we, we talk about this in the canons, title is literally the record in the register. So your original title, in terms of what is, is, is provided through a birth certificate, is that record entry into the register, which when it is a slave register, has a very old special name. So a title in a slave register under the Roman system, being the record, used to be called a thing called a nomen. And guess what word comes from the word nomen? I don't know. Your name. So I agree with you. But I think I answered the first part clearly that when you stand up as general executor, it is beyond the scope 
of their claims. All right. I have one more question. Yeah. Uh, I'm looking at a deed of trust here. Yeah. And I'll just, it says this deed of trust, and it says security instrument in parentheses, is made on the, the grantor is my name, who acquired title as my name, uh, husband and wife. Uh, it says the grantor is who acquired title. So doesn't that, I'm confused because it says right there who acquired title. And I went to the auditor's office, asked some questions, and they said, they talk about the deed, says, well, you should have the deed. And I've been into it with the bank somewhat. They say they don't have the promissory note and all this. I, I don't want to get drawn out here, but right. it says right there, who acquired title? I want. I would like to know where the title is because in my belief, I believe the state wants it by that. Well, this is the, yeah, this is back to that question of what is title. Title is an entry. In their system, a title is nothing more than a description of a book entry in a special register of property. And they have different registers for different types of property. So a noble, someone with a, a high title, is in a different form of registry than you and I. That's all it is. What, all one, right? more, one more point to this. It yeah, says who sure. acquired title. Would that not say that this was paid for at the time of this uh, happening? I'm not too sure because I'm not I'm not I, I didn't quite get the whole gist of what you're saying. But if you want to send me an email, send me an email and I'll and I'll try my best to get back to you on it. Okay? Okay. That would work. All right, All right. thank you. Sir. Good on you. All right, thank you. All right. Over uh, the chat real quick again. Um in your opinion, are there any countries or places not under the control or influence of these evil uh, ancient system, ancient evil system. Uh, there are, but I'm not too sure if there are places you want to live. Uh, uh, the one that, that was the, um, the top of the pops in terms of uh, reforming itself uh, was a place called Libya. And uh, it, it was uh, promoting a number of anti-bank type notions uh, it had banned the concept of mortgages. It had opened up the concept of developing of land. It had um, uh, it had uh, had promoted the concept of no interest uh, loans into to business, and it was seeking to promote a whole range of different um, countries in Africa to adopt uh, a similar sort of structure. Now, admittedly, it was run by a guy that got there by murdering people. And uh, if, you, if you were anti him, then they'd certainly come after you. But certainly uh, uh, Libya to the banks was enemy number one. Um, another, another one is uh, um, Iran, and another one is China. And of course, um, North Korea is another one. But the problem in all those cases is that when you look at them, it, it almost allows you in an instant to say that um, these are the enemies of commerce, these are the enemies of capitalism. And of course, that comes back to the meaning of enemy. So sadly, uh, you are dealing in a system that either you are uh, living under a dictator or you are a conceptual um, voluntary slave. It hasn't been a very good choice. Until now. Actually, wasn't it the four or five countries that are not part of the World Bank system right now at this yep. time that are? That's right. There's only about five or six. That's right. Yeah. Uh huh. Yep. Very good. All right. Let's go back to Alpha on the phones here. Alpha, are you there? Hi, Frank. Hi. Um, Hi. I was going to ask this question too. Is there any real advantage to trying to get yourself uh, to be a non-registered, non-resident alien, or is this process kind of leading you in that direction? Look, I I know that that, that has been promoted over time, 
and certainly when you look at the concept of what does an enemy represent and other things,